So at the party, Jason Derulo walks in, immediately picks up a quarter million dollar watch to look at. A hundred to one of these. It's extremely limited production of white gold. I get that. I love that. Mark my words, we're gonna sell him this watch. Ladies and gentlemen, we are located back in the 305 in Miami, our absolute favorite city, doing an event at the Fountain Blue, hosted by MP Beach Club. We have a great selection of watches. Give us a nice little island over here, and we made our core key pieces, all the hot stuff fit. So we can't wait for a great event, great drinks, a lot of food, and we're just about to get this thing popping off. Cheers. So we're getting ready for the party. We're in a bit of a rush because people are already starting to walk in. We got to lay out all these watches. The reason for this table is obviously we had limited space. So my and Roman's idea was like, look, we got a lot of car guys. We got a younger crowd for the most part, hype flex crowd. Let's bring the hype flex stuff out. That's your Rolex. That's going to be your Pasek Leap, Audemars Piguet, Richard Mille. Then we threw a few curveballs in here with the debut fuse. We literally laid out everything accordingly. David Yu, got Lange and Sun, Patex, a few here. A few random things here. MBNF, her work, obviously the Rolex is here. A few paddocks here. The big boy tray of AP and Richard Mill. More Rolex, more Rolex, more Rolex, more Rolex, more Rolex, more Rolex. Rolex, 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 Rolex. The most expensive watch at this table is right here. 3700J Conjar. So this is gonna be north of a million dollars. Right here. We got the RM1103. It's one of the finest things about Black Tank. Every time we come here, there's a deal to be done. We meet our friends and clients to pick up the nicest stuff. Literally picked this up like two hours ago. Yeah. Three hours ago. Right on the way here. We call that drive through. The fast food deal. Yeah, why not? Oh, I love Cuban sandwiches. Just get an entire montage of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oscar, I'm Adrian. Nice to meet you. What's your name? I'm Roman. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Can I see that? Yeah, please. Whatever you want to see, just have a look. So this is the last of the brass movement, the 38 millimeters. 385. Great watch. What is this one? That's an FB drawing, Chronometer Blue. And I had that grocery one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's... I don't like it. You don't like it? I don't wear the watch. I just want to see I wore it twice. So let's figure out a trade. Let's exchange numbers. I don't like it. I always like that watch. And you make money on it too, which is good. If you got it at retail, yeah? No, no, I pay a lot of money. Oh, you did? Lady Richard Mill? Yeah. Right now, no, but we can get whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can only bring a little bit with me. To be fair, I thought it was going to be a sausage party. But then I see girls here. I didn't really bring any ladies watching. But that's the perfect size for you. That's a 36, yeah. All factory. These are 41, so. AP? This is from the 1970s. Listen, we can exchange numbers. I can send you some stuff. So Jason Derulo finally arrives at the party. Naturally, the first thing we do is we look at his wrist and uh, saw a buzz down. I have nothing against buzz downs, but I figured we could do a little bit better. Wow. 
Uh, so this one, it's uh, it's a lot more mature. What is going for? Like, you go through stages yeah, when you're buying watches, is. and like you kind of start with the bus sounds, and you slowly upgrade to where it's like you got a factory piece. It's a little more special, you know? This is something that will hold on to its value. So I'm not surprised the first watch Jason picks up. This is a white gold open work double balance with baguettes around the dial. Absolutely stunning piece. You don't want to mess around with aftermarket. You don't really know what you're buying. I mean, a lot of guys, they swap cases, parts. But that's how I feel about all things. Are you like, all through is a crook. They are crooks. When it comes to watches, we make sure that the people that we're selling to are getting in at the right price because we hope they'll come back and trade out. And it's all about return business, bro. Relationships, you know? You? Huh? You have an RM? Well, some of them can be a little bit out there. Like uh, design-wise, but so this is a uh, for no. This is a very unique brand. They're just starting out. Uh, I thought this was the Richard. No, 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 no. You're pretty active though, right? Like you, you work out, you do a lot of stuff. So maybe go with something on like a rubber strap as well. Like RM is good because you work out in it, but if you want to go for something a little bit cheaper, go for like a Rolex on a rubber strap. From the moment Jason walked over to our showcase, his eyes immediately became centered on this white gold double balance baguette bezel. As we were talking about the watch, I know two of my clients over there had one in rose gold and one in stainless steel. So I wanted to pull them over, pull those watches over and explain to him the difference, the 41 double balance skeletons and how they come and why this one was so rare. 100 to one of these, 50 to one of those. Does that make sense? So it's extremely limited production of white gold that I get that. Uh, that's what you're looking at. Although it relatively looks, yeah, which essentially is why it looks. So this is market price about above 30. This is around 200. That one's 290. That's what you're getting. Yeah. You're paying for the exclusivity in the baguette bezel. These are pretty nice too. Yeah. So Darula is not an impulse buyer, but we traded contacts. Business will be done. It's probably not gonna be the most eventful concept. <laughs> I just got myself like an outfit that I'm just leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I kinda wanna sneak a backpack as well. Another thing about today is like there's so much content to be had. We don't really know like what to film, when to film, how to film. Just film everything at this point. This is like we have to basically be on our A game when it comes to content today because a lot of this is just gonna be like a one chance sort of thing. And if we get the shot, we get the shot. If not, then. We're on our way to shoot some guns. It's gonna be an absolute blast. Let's get this rally started. First MPH rally, and I have to pee. Dude, yeah, I, I didn't think to go. Driving was sick, yeah. It was actually like, uh, it was scary because you know, you never know like if someone's gonna break or whatever, you just have to be like super cautious, but also like you wanna experience everything and like, you know, I don't know. It was just, it was crazy. So we're about to shoot some guns, eat some steak. It's gonna be good. That was pretty tough. Yeah. Why are we so good at that? I don't know. Good times on the range. So on top of being a supercar rally, I almost considered it a watch rally as well. There were so many nice watches in the room. I just had to go around and see what everyone was wearing. Bro, you were straight vibing. That's crazy. What kind of watch do you have? What kind of watch do I have? Yeah. <laughs> a G-Shock. All right, he has an AP 15500 on the wrist. What was your first watch? Um, it was a gift. My first watch was a Wimbledon. I loved it. Oh, it was a uh, 41 Rolex. millimeter? Yeah, nice. um, two tone. Stay flying. What's up, bro? Who's yeah, got a watch yeah. on? Yeah, 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 yeah. What kind of watch do you have on? Rolex. What was your first watch? A Rolex. <laughs> Heard of your first. Avi. Yeah. What kind of watch do you have on? Hey, Bamford Daytona. 
What was your first watch? Batman. How did you? Poker game. That's what I was gonna ask. Wanted in a poker game. Yeah. Alex, yeah. what was your first watch? Uh, Rolex HS 2 tone, 36 millimeter. How much you pay for it? Uh, 3,500. What do you have on now? Uh, 5712. Paddock. Beautiful. I have the meat sweats just standing here, bro. <laughs> how about that? An LB logo on a fucking CVR. Real car guys will know how crazy that is. What's well, good? So, what watch are you wearing? It's a uh, AP. Uh, what was your first watch? My very first watch was a Breitling. Breitling, okay. And what do you do for a living? I uh, trade Forex. Trade Forex. Very cool. What do you have on? AP, Rolls Gold, Cup Really nice. What was your first watch? A uh, Rolex Gold. Rolex. Yeah. Okay. And do you have a watch on? No. First watch coming soon. I have a watch. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> what was your first watch? Uh, Dayjust. Dayjust? Yeah, two tone. What's your girl watch? If you, if you have uh, one. My Bulgari Serpentine. Serpentine. Okay. Good. What's your girl watch? She already has her girl watch. Yeah. This is really nice, actually. That's beautiful. Good size, too. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Oh, man. I'm on the watch hunt right now. All right. Next up. Yo, what's your girl watch? My girl watch? Girl uh, MPH watch. Cobra Span. Okay. And uh, I don't know turn. watches like that. Your turn. How is your experience on the MPH Cobra Span? Absolutely insane. Best thing I've ever done in my life, honestly. Like, Yay! I kept saying, like, my 12-year-old self would be so happy right now. And no it's sort of bringing that younger self out, so. I'm glad we thank you, thank you, MPH ready. Rally. What kind of watch are you guys wearing right now? We have a 15407 ST, and then we have 228235 Rose Gold Olive. What was your first watch? My first watch was a Cartier. I remember. Cartier, Cartier Santos. Interesting. First watch ever. Got you. What's your girl watch? Tech Philippe Grand Complication, Grandmaster right. Chime. Oh yeah. Me. I have so many favorite watches. I don't know. <laughs> Probably a, a, the, the Sapphire Richard Milley. Sapphire Richard Milley. Yeah. And what do you guys do for a living? We're in the lending space. Lending space. Awesome. Thank you, you so much. If you guys ever need money, you know where to go. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. you guys. What kind of watch do you have on? Skydweller. And what was your first watch? Black Sub. Black Sub. And what is your grill watch? Rose Gold AP with the gray dial. Rose Gold AP. And what do you do for a living? On pawn shops. Pawn shops. Awesome. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. What kind of watch do you have on? All right. Zero, zero, seven. Really nice. Can we see it? Very nice. I like the baguettes. What uh, What was your first watch? Rolex. Rolex. And what is your grail watch? There you go. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You out of here? What kind of watches do you guys have on right now? Matic 5980. What was your first watch? A two tone sub Mariner back in 03. Two tone sub? Brand new for 4,000. And what's your what's your Instagram handle so people can follow you? The Watch Boss. The Watch Boss. You sell watches? Yes. There we go. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate it, bro. Drive safe. So we're here with Lee, the founder of MPH Club, the founder of MPH Club Rally, the best rally, uh, I think, ever. Uh, thank you, thank you. So congratulations on it. What watch are you wearing right now? Ooh, this, is the, this is the Lee special. This is yeah. This is one of my favorites. It's a little dirty right now, but yeah. this is my 44 offshore AP. Awesome. Uh, what was your first watch? It was a Chapar, the really? Gran Turismo Chapar. Yeah, okay. Like a four thousand dollar watch. My first watch. Very, very suiting. Yes. Very suiting. And uh, what is your grill watch? I love the one that you guys actually have in your display, which is the skeleton white gold with the diamonds. I, guess. I was gonna ask what you do for a living, but I think I think we all know that. So <laughs> I rent exotic cars and drive fast. There you go. <laughs> MPH Club Miami. Check them out. They're uh, they're here to stay. So shout out to Lee from MPH Club for hosting this insane rally. I can't wait for next year. It's gonna be insane. But now. Let's get this car blown up and let's keep it pushing. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed your time and thank you to Lee and the Mile Per Hour Club team for hosting this incredible event. Thank you, thank you. Great finale. That was a bit underwhelming. Matthew, you think we can do a little better? All the good things come to an end though. It was a great weekend. We wrapped it up with a beautiful boat party at Seafair in Miami. Absolutely incredible. The food, drinks, atmosphere, watches, everything was amazing. So let's head back to the office and get this month started. I think this is the first one you want to try on? Probably the one I'm going to go with. It just feels so nice. It's perfect, you know what I mean? Dude, you wear this on a day-to-day -day basis, you absolutely but I feel like I'm gonna blow beat it anyone up. out of the wall. You, you probably can. I have this for two weeks. Yeah, but that's normal, it's gold. Look, here, I'll show you. I've had this two years, this thing is, is mangled, you know what I mean? Like, 
check, you see? It's all it's all scraped. It, this is, you know what I mean? It's we polish this out, that's totally fine. Watch like this, we'll, we'll stand up to wear, no problem. That's not an issue. And listen, you wear it, you enjoy it. And if you want, we can always refinish it. That's not a problem. Well, when we say we polish something, don't get it twisted. We're not, we're removing metal, but we're not like scraping the thing bare bones. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're just refinishing the case and the bracelet for the most part. It's so funny because I thought I'd never wear that one. Literally, yeah. and it's like my daily wear right now. It's nice. Two tone is nice. I brought this too, two tone Wimbledon just for you to try. Off. Just pull up. Yeah. Uh, Here we go. I feel like this feels more like an everyday watch than that. That's probably better as a daily because because of the bracelet. You know what I mean? The bracelet is just much more suitable for every occasion. Whereas yeah. rubber rubber is a bit more sporty. I mean, you can always put this on the leather strap. It's just not as can well. Can this go uh, on a bracelet as well, or there's no bracelet? No, for there's this? no bracelet. They made a 5726 with a bracelet, but it's much more, much more pricey. Yeah, here, just tighten it up. If anything, right up against your wrist, just so, so you feel. It's also bigger. Like profile is bigger. This is much more slim. It's yeah, sleek. this is much thicker. I this see. is like it's just it's aesthetic perfection. You know what I mean? This is my favorite Nautilus. This is a simple watch. I have no idea anything like. <laughs> this is this is actually simpler. So this is so that's your power reserve. Uh, that's just your moon phase. That's your date and then sub seconds. Here is so that's a 24 hour indicator. Moon phase. That's your date. That's your day of the week and the month. So that's an annual calendar. So you'll have to set this once every uh, once every year. So every time it's February 28th, if it. If it stays wound, you just have to reset it then. Otherwise, it will keep the day, the day, the month, and the moon face accurate for the whole year except for uh, in February. <clears throat> I don't like the white dial. I feel like it makes me look very old. The white? <clears throat> yeah. Fair. It's fair compared to the blue. Yeah, but again, I feel just like Vacheron's blue. Yeah. I feel like... Too blue. It's too blue. I mean, I, I can always get a black dial. Worst comes to worst. That's not an issue. Yeah. Definitely better than the white. Shout out to my boy Zevi. He came in, picked up a brand new 5712 Nautilus for his collection. It's been crazy to see the growth in his watch collection over the last couple months. And I gotta say, he's got a killer, killer piece that he just added. Gary, tell me a story. F you. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite. <laughs> that like? who, who was that guy you, you were selling out of Texas? The guy out of Texas who was doing something for Lil Wayne? Remember? No way. So like a long, long, a long time ago, this is when Lil Wayne was. Wow. So my That's dad, a little my, too my dad said he was working with one of his one of these guys that knows Lil Wayne, and then I think he was like doing something with a pendant, something with a skull pendant. And I like told my friends, like the whole school school knew, oh, Gary's Lil Wayne's jeweler. I'm like, no, he's not. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you were the man in town. You know? Listen, I remember good old times when we used to be, used to yeah. buy deals unseen. Somebody would call me. There's a three hundred thousand dollar deal. I think it's good for you. Okay. Okay. I buy it, and I would sell this deal without looking at it. Those days are gone. Wow. Once I bought a deal, 70,000 pieces from rent a center. They used to rent jewelry, so I bought a deal like 70,000 pieces, two suitcases. It took me about five minutes to buy the deal. It took me about 10 minutes to talk to the guy to give me the suitcases. Those wow. days are gone. We work hard, we know what we're doing, we know the market for stuff. But this shit he used to do and the shit he still does, like that's that's impressive. Yeah. My eye as good as it was. It just business changed completely. Dude, he used to go like this, bro. I've never seen anything like it. They would give him a tray. Yeah, I would yeah, grab a tray. Go like this. 70, 72 diamond drains, okay? Like, well, how do you know what the paint I would I would, would look cold. I would look on the tray with seventy two diamond rings like this. Give me two minutes. Help. I would tell you how many carats of diamonds and 72 rings is. I would tell you how much I have to pay and I knew how much money I can and make. And he knew who it was already sold to. Like yes. Sold. Like, a, like, a, like a, you know what I mean? Sick, automatic. Like a hawk. Fast buyer. I was with you in New York. You took the trick. He's a fast decision maker. But the, que the question is, do you think you have room to improve? Do I have room to improve? Probably. We used to buy deals like you would not believe. You would not believe. One time I bought a deal, unseen, believe it or not, from uh, Gavberg, his partner. They offered me a deal. 
They said, we, we pay $200,000 for a deal. We want two forty, dollars just buy it. You know, I bought the deal unseen. You know, I came to New York, I offered to somebody, then, so these two guys, they came Saturday. They came to my office downtown. There was like 20 boxes there. The first box, box I opened up, I offered them $20,000 to go home. You know, they said, no, 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 no. They bargained with me for three hours. They bought the deal. They called me the next day, do you have another deal like this? I said, no. They made over $100,000 in one day. This is the kind of deals we used to buy. This is way before the internet. My friends used to go there and buy uh, just gold jewelry, put it on a scale, melt it down and make 25-30% profits on it. Jewelry business was fun back then. Right now it's a struggle. I remember the first time we went to Hong Kong, we had a suitcase full of Richard Mills. We didn't know what to do with it. I bought a stone for $30,000, I sold it for two sixty-five. dollars oh, And then I found out that I sold it too cheap. The stone was worth twice as much. I sold 2,000 writing pens, Montegrappa and DuPont writing pens. I just bro brokerage a deal, you know. I, I put two guys together, we made a lot of money. I sold 2,000 Montegrappa and DuPont pens. That was the same show in Hong Kong when I sold that stone. It was a good show for us. Each individual person here possesses their own set of skills, their own set of abilities. But what my pops was able to do, and I say was, because I still believe that he was better back in the day than he is now, what he was able to do and still is able to do in terms of buying product and analyzing product and knowing how much to pay and then who to sell it for is quite unbelievable. His eye is trained. So shout out to the OG. Guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we will see you next week on Gray Market.